You're listening to the Thank Dog It's Friday podcast, episode number 13. If you've ever wondered how to be the pack leader of your house, you're in luck because today we're talking all about being a pack leader, how to gain back control, and how to have your dream dog. All right, guys, this is a good one, so let's tune in. Hi, I'm Courtney Green. I'm a dog mom of five rescues, a full-time foster mama, and I rescue tons of other animals like bunnies, chickens, and guinea pigs as well. It's safe to say this mom of a million has her hands full, and it doesn't stop there. I own an award-winning dog walking company, Dog Squad LA, and I also run an online business all catered to dog parents like you. That's a lot of things, right? But I know how important my energy is when it comes to being around animals, so I don't waste a ton of time stressing about all of the little things. And I'd be lying if I told you that came naturally to me. In fact, I've made it my mission to continuously work on bettering myself because better human, better dogs. You see, dogs are a direct reflection of their human, and once we really uncrack that, everything becomes a whole lot easier. So that's what we're going to do together. Each week, I'm going to explore a revolutionary approach to dog parenting, positivity, mindset, and everything in between, all designed to help you take immediate action on the most important work when it comes to raising a dog. So thank you for being here and tuning in, and thank dog it's Friday. Hello, hello, it's Courtney here. Happy Friday. I hope you guys are having a beautiful day so far. We're in for a real treat today. This episode has been highly requested. So many people want to know how to be the leader of their house and not just the leader when we're speaking on human terms, but a leader that your dog could recognize. So I have so many tips for you. I've broken it down into sections so that you guys know how to be the pack leader when it comes to walking, when it comes to meal times, play time, obedience uh, tips as well, when it comes to being in the house, and then also when it comes to boundaries. So I've really put together an amazing episode for you guys with a lot of tips. We're gonna go through all of the tips kind of rapid style so that you guys can see exactly what to do. There's gonna be so much information. I can't even believe that I'm giving this out for free, but I love you guys so much. I want everyone to know exactly what to do. If you're getting a new dog or if you just got a new dog, these are things that you wanna implement right away because If you set this foundation with your dog in the beginning, it's gonna be very easy for them to see this as how they live with you. But if you've had your dog for several months or several years, it might be a little bit harder to transition to these habits every day, but I guarantee if you do them, you are gonna be the pack leader in no time. Your dog is gonna respect you. Your dog is gonna listen to you. And every single person that sees you guys is gonna be jealous. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick peek into my week this week and give you guys some more information before we dive in. So let's do that first. So technically this week is the last working week of the year for me and I'm not surprised at all that I went another entire year without taking a vacation. Going into next year, I'm really gonna be a lot more intentional because for the last two years, I've worked the entire year with no breaks, practically no days off. And then I've gone into the holiday vacation saying, okay, better take a week off before the year ends just so I can say I took a vacation. So pretty much that's the same thing that's happening this year. We're taking off two weeks this year and we have our team taking over for us, which has been incredible. We are hiring on that note. So if you know anyone amazing who is experienced and absolutely loves dogs, please send them my way. But one thing that I did want to say is if you are like me, if you do have trouble relaxing, if you have trouble demanding time for yourself, or if you go every year without even scheduling time off, just schedule the time at the beginning of the year and tell everyone in advance so that you know for sure that you're going to take a break because it's not anyone else's fault, but your own. I haven't stuck up for myself and said, hey, I need time off. I need to do this. So I want to give permission to anyone else who is in that boat because we all are trying to take care of a million things. And if you're trying to listen to this episode, you're likely obsessed with growing like I am and you're trying to be the best leader that you can for your dog and for your household and anyone else around you. So if that is the case, you are likely someone who takes care of a lot of things. And I just want to make sure that you're also taking care of yourself. So if you haven't already listened to episode number two, The Caregiver Cure, that one is really amazing for you if you relate to this. But I don't want to get too much into this. I just wanted to say this is my last working week. I do have a vacation coming up, but don't worry. I am going to be releasing episodes and videos and all of that as well. So when I say it's my last working week of the year, I mean only for Dog Squad LA. (laughs) I don't mean for the podcast. I don't mean for my, my personal brand. That is just for everything else. So if you guys do have any questions on how I made the transition to never taking any time off to finally taking some time off every single 
whole week and then also transitioning to having two weeks off. I'm not going to lie. It has been very stressful for me. Just knowing that I'm not going to be working for two weeks has given me a lot of anxiety. I don't know why that is, but again, I'm a Capricorn. I'm a workaholic. Working for me is kind of my comfort. Helping people really makes me happy. So to pull it back a little bit and to say, hey, this is the time for myself that I'm not necessarily going to be able to help you. It's really hard for me. And I just wanted to to let you guys know, because I know there's more of you that are just like me out there. And I just wanted to say, hey, you're not alone. We're all in this together. Okay. So any other update for me? I spent all day yesterday cleaning out my garage. (laughs) I don't know why I did that, but I thought, okay, I'm about to go into my vacation. I want to make sure that my house is exactly how I want it. And this entire year, I've pushed off cleaning out my garage. So I Marie kondo that motherfucker. I took every single thing out of it and I spent the entire day cleaning out my garage. So everything that I didn't want, everything that doesn't need to be there, everything that I said that I needed and I didn't need is gone. And I tell you guys, now I have my whole garage to work, to create, to paint, to build things for my vacation. And I just feel so happy. So that's my update. I pretty much do house stuff and animal stuff all day. And that's what's exciting to me. So that's about as far as I can go with you guys for updates. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into the checklist of how to be a pack leader. If you guys have any, any, any questions on this, I do want you guys to know that I am going to be hosting my first workshop that's going to be live and it's going to be all about pack leaders. And the reason why I'm kicking it off with a pack leader workshop is because I have had a plan, which I'm going to get to in a minute, of having a monthly workshop, one or two workshops every single month. And we're going to be kicking that off in 2020. And the number one thing that we're going to start with is being the pack leader, because I think that is the best thing to start with for the year. Like I said in the beginning, you want to set a foundation and everyone is starting things new. Everyone wants to change in the beginning of the year. Everyone has their resolutions. And what better way to change your habits with your household, with your dog, with your family than to be a better pack leader. So that's going to be our first workshop. And a lot of people have been really loving the podcast, loving all of the things I've been putting on my Instagram. If you don't follow me already, follow me at Dog Squad LA on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook as well, but I'm definitely more active on Instagram. So what I wanted to let you guys know is how you guys can work with me because I've had a lot of people reaching out saying, how can I repay you? All of this information has been so helpful. I've also jumped on a few free coaching calls. So those are also available, but I wanted to give you guys all of the ways that you guys can work with me. So if you guys are wondering how to get more of me, more direct access, more questions asked outside of just free help on Instagram or social media, I'm going to lay that all out for you here. So the first way to work with me is if you want me to work directly with your dog. So that means socialization, walking, training, behavior problems, all of that in person and you live in Los Angeles, specifically the San Fernando Valley, then please go to my website www.dogsquadla.com and you'll find all of the information for all of our walking services, adventures, socialization, all the things. And the number one thing that I just added on Dog Squad LA because I was doing it pretty much under the table, but I wasn't charging for it and I just have too big of a heart, but y'all, we got to pay bills. I can't do this anymore. So I added the service on Dog Squad LA for consultations because I am a professional dog behavioralist and I really have a lot of skills and a lot of knowledge to help people with separation anxiety, eating problems, leash reactivity, a lot of the problems that people deal with on a daily basis. I am able to come to your house and pretty much I help you more than I help your dog because I can't be there 24 seven, but you can. So those consultations are available. And if you don't live in Los Angeles or you don't like seeing people in person, then you definitely have the option to work with me online. So my online options are there's several of them so we have the dog parent experience which you guys have been hearing me talk about tons and tons on this podcast that is my signature 30-day program for new dog parents but pretty much anyone who needs a makeover for their dog parenting this course is going to be amazing literally everything that I teach everything that I think a dog parent should know to get started is in that course so even if you've done this for years on end but you don't think you really did it quote unquote the right way from day one check that out The next option we have is the Dog Parent Society. So this is my membership that's going to be kicking off in 2020. So just a couple of weeks away, you're going to start hearing about this more in the next episode next week. But the Dog Parent Society is really for dog parents who already have gone through the course or they already know exactly what they're doing. And they just want a coach and a community to give them all of the sources, to give them extra support, extra ideas, and a whole bunch of information that they already didn't know. But this membership is really to expand your mind 
mindset, to expand your energy, and it's really to level up your dog parenting. So the dog parent experience is a starter. It's my signature course, but the Dog Parent Society is my monthly membership where we're really going to grow together. So a lot of these things like the pack leader checklist that we're about to go through is going to be part of the Dog Parent Society because this is something that we need to work on on a monthly basis. And with the Dog Parent Society, you're pretty much getting access to all of my content for one small price per month. So all of the things that you guys don't see on the podcast, I have so many trainings that I do outside of the podcast, Instagram, Facebook, and all of that are paid trainings. So with the Dog Parent Society, all of my paid trainings are included. So we have Dog Parent Experience is my signature program. Dog Parent Society is my membership that's going to be launching in 2020. And then we have the workshops that I just mentioned every single month. I'm going to be hosting one to two workshops. The first one is going to be pack lead. The second one is going to be about crate training and potty training, but all of those workshops are going to be paid for at a very low price and they're going to be one to two hour live workshops online so that you guys get a workbook. You can follow along with me and learn as you go. And then you have me afterwards for support as well. And again, if you are part of my monthly membership, the Dog Parent Society, you get those workshops included. All right. And the last one is just my coaching calls. If you just have a couple of questions that are specific for something that you're going through in your life, with your dog right now, or you don't really like reading or listening to audio lessons or watching videos and you just want to ask, ask, ask away, it's not the most efficient source of getting information because you don't have everything in front of you to consume on your own. But if you just wanted to talk to me and get it all out and talk to me about something specifically, that is definitely an option. My consultations over the phone, you can range from 30 minutes up to two hours and we do have video chat as well. And what those are are pretty much the same thing as my in-person behavior consultations, but it's all online. So those are all of the ways to work with me. I'm sorry if that was a little long, just take a few minutes out of your time. But a lot of people have been reaching out. They want the next step. They want to go beyond the podcast. And those are the ways to do it exactly. So the first website that I mentioned is www.dogsquadla.com. That is for all of my Los Angeles services, dog walking, adventures, field trips, consultations, and training. And then everything else is going to be at www.wolfiecourt.com. That's www.wolfycourt.com. And that's my personal brand. It's going to have everything you need. Even Dog Squad LA is linked on there. So if you want to remember one of them, it's wolfycourt.com. That's me. All right. This is a really amazing episode. I'm not going to waste any more time diving into it. So let's get in. We're going to be going over again how to be a pack leader of your house, how to be the pack leader during meal times, during walking, during playtime, how to be the pack leader during all obedience lessons and also how to be the pack leader when you're setting boundaries. So let's dive in. (laughs) Oh gosh, I should not have saying that. Okay, so the first thing that I want to start off with is in order to become the leader of your pack, you have to start thinking like a dog. So we live in a dog's world anyway, right? But for some reason, we still think just like a human and that's natural to us. But for the next 30 to 45 minutes, however long this episode goes further, I really want you guys to step into the paws or the shoes of a dog and stop thinking like a human just for this little while. Because if you do think like a dog, a lot of this is going to make sense to you and not just think like your dog. Think like a dog, like their natural roots. Like how were they in the wild? How would they be if they were a stray dog? How would they be if they were really close to their roots of being a wolf? Think about their ancestry. Think about how they feel naturally and their instincts. That's what I really want you guys to step into right now and not how a human would show up as a leader. Because what happens is people reason, dogs don't reason. And the reason why that's important is because people can say, oh, I'm busy right now. I can't show up as the leader. I'll do that in a second. But your dog isn't thinking, oh, she's busy right now. That's why she's not being an assertive leader. So another example would be, oh, this person could really be the leader at this point right now. Maybe let me take a step back and let them shine a little bit. No, no, no. Leaders do not take days off in the wild, right? So if that's the case, then we need to think like a dog. We cannot reason. We cannot think like a leader would. And in the human world, we have to think, how would a leader show up in a dog pack without any humans involved? Okay. So I just want to start off with that because a lot of the things that I'm going to say are really going to irk you. And I'm not going to lie. When I first learned all of this several years back, it was really hard for me to shed this layer of being that really nice mom who gave into everything, who was super sweet, who was really excited and gave a bunch of 
high voices and who let their dog pretty much do whatever they want because it wasn't hurting anyone. And all of the things that I was doing, I didn't even realize. And they weren't even that bad. I saw myself as being the leader. But what I didn't realize, they're not only enabling your dog, but they're also making your dog easily step into that role of being a leader. And once they step into the role of being the leader of your house, it is very hard to get back control. So I just wanted to say, if you are someone who is looking into this and you get a little turned off by some of the things that I say, just roll with the punches because I'm telling you, it's not going to feel the same as it used to. If you really want your dream dog, if you want your dog to see you as a leader, if you want to be a calm, assertive leader and your dog to be calm, submissive, you need to follow these rules, these habits, because this is how your dog thinks. Okay. All right. So another little rule of thumb, the pushier your dog is, the stricter you should be. And you always have to be consistent because if you're not consistent, your dog is going to wonder if it's that one time that you're going to give them a break. Okay. So take back your crown, add these habits to your daily routine, and please let me know how you like them and which ones were your favorite. And if there's any of them that you just can't really add to your schedule, I would like to know that as well. So let's start with meal times. This one is one of the easiest ones. I'm sure a lot of people already know this, so we're going to wean our way into it. But before I actually get into meal times, every single one of these things that you need to practice, they're not going to be implemented the right way if you don't start your day with exercise. So you have to start your dog off with at least 30 to 60 minutes of exercise, depending on their temperament. If it's they're not that active, then do less. But if they're active and if they're energetic and if they're puppies, definitely do more. But there's a reason why they say a tired dog is a good dog. If your dog is tired and they've burned physical energy, and mental energy, that is the perfect time for you to train them, one, but to two, to also implement new things like these new pack leader habits because they're gonna take them in a lot easier than they would if they're just like neurotic, going bananas, wanting to eat everything, wanting to play, running around everywhere. So burn that mental energy and that physical energy first before you try all of these things. And as a side note, a lot of these things are gonna burn a ton of mental energy. And if you talk to me once, I definitely, definitely know that I've said mental stimulation is more important a lot of the times than physical energy being burned. So let's dive in. I keep saying it, but there's so much to say. Oh my God. Okay. So for meal times, the number one thing that I always say to people, if you're currently free feeding your dogs, switch them to scheduled meal times. In the wild, dogs need to earn their food. So they often work long hours to eat. And that means that around the same day every day, they're going out and they're working for their food and they know what time they're getting that meal. Or they don't know the time. They're not working on time, but you want to give them scheduled meal times because you want to keep them on a routine that their body is going to yearn for it. So your dog needs to know their food is earned from you, which you are the leader. And the best way to do that is have a balanced walk before meal times, which we're going to get into walks next, but have a balanced walk before meal time so that they feel that they earned it and then pick up their bowls immediately after meal time is over. And the reason why you want to do that is because you want them to know that the food is coming from you. If you walk them and then you just leave it there and let them free feed all day. There's no routine to that. There's no schedule. There's no, oh, she prepared this. He prepared this. We did this together as a pack. You know, you want to walk your dog, make sure it's balanced, make sure you add structure and then feed them. And then if you're like me, Cesar Milan says this, I absolutely love this little trick. If you're preparing food that has wet food or meat in it, or even if you just add water, mix it with your bare hands. And if you're a clean freak, who cares? Mix it with your bare hands hands because that smell on their food is going to tell them that their leader prepared their food. So this is one of the ones that might irk you, but leaders eat first guys. So feed your dog after you eat. So if you're about to prepare yourself some food and you're like, oh, I should just get the dog's food ready, get them out of the way in the wild. That's really not how it goes. And I know this is one of the ones that was harder for me to switch to. And I don't do it every single day. I probably should, but your dog really should be eating after you because if you want to be the pack leader, leaders eat first. And a number one trick to add for meal times, and it's going to burn a lot of energy is you want to practice basic obedience with having your dog sit and stay while you set their food down. Even preparing their food the whole time, your dog should be sitting and staying and just being extremely calm and submissive the whole time. They shouldn't be dancing behind you, barking, gnawing at your pants, scratching at your leg. They really should be calm and submissive. And when they are ready for some food and they've been calm, give them a nice command so they know that 
they can get up and it's time for them to eat. And this is really gonna burn a lot of energy, mental energy right before feeding. So each meal time, I definitely recommend you practicing this. And each time, make sure that you're making the time longer. So if for the first time they're sitting down with the food in front of them for five seconds, make it 10 seconds the next day. Really stretch that muscle so that they're getting used to not going for their food right away. So that's how you can be the pack leader when it comes to meal times. And now let's go into walking. So we talked about walking before, doing a balanced walk right before meal times is always great. But whenever you are leaving for a walk, there's a lot of things that you guys have to do. And these are the most important things because if you're getting ready for a walk and you're walking out the door and you're not the pack leader, everything else is out the window. You can't try and be the leader during the walk if you didn't start the walk as a leader. I want you guys to hear that again. If you did not start the walk as a leader, and that means from the moment you picked up that leash, You are not going to be a leader at all throughout the entire walk. You need to start the walk with leadership. So how you do that is whenever you walk through a hallway, a doorway, an entrance, an exit, anything like that, your dog should go after you. Why? Because you are the leader. Before you enter the doorway, just say wait or back or any command that you need to use. That's just that one command for that one action. I want you guys to get in the habit of only using one command for one action so your dog knows exactly what you want in that moment. But what you're going to do is you're going to have your dog sit, stay, use your body, use your energy, whatever you need to do to make sure that you're the first in that doorway is going to make your dog realize over time that when there is a doorway, they're not going to sprint in front of you and try and be first because all that's showing is your dog thinks they're the leader. And if you do go in the kitchen and you have a treat and your dog darts in front of you to get into the small walkway first, they think they're the leader. And that's a really great way to see if they are. But if your dog, if you're walking right next to your dog and they see a doorway coming, and they slow down and they let you walk first, they see you as the leader. And this is gonna be hard. Your dog isn't just gonna be like, oh, you wanna walk first? Cool. No, you are gonna have to make them sit. You're gonna have to make them wait. You're gonna have to use commands. You're gonna have to do training. And it's gonna take a while. You have to be consistent. But this number one thing is the way that your dog is gonna be able to see that you are a true leader because true leaders go first. You don't always have to go first, but if you enforce this routine, if you enforce them to have to have manners, then they're going to look for your direction. Leaders don't always have to be the first to eat, the first to talk, the first to do all of the things, walk through the hallway. But what happens is if you demand that kind of control and you demand that kind of manners from your dog, then what's going to happen? Your dog is going to look to you, the leader, for direction. So instead of just darting in front of you, they're going to look up to you like, hey man, what do you want me to do? Want me to hang back? Want me to go forward? And you let them know what you want. True leaders always have the option of going first, but that doesn't mean they always have to. So I just want to make that one clear. This isn't something where you're just 100%. I'm the king. I'm the queen. My dog is a peasant. This is not where I'm going at all. This is all equal. I'm just showing you guys how to be the leader of your pack in the way that your dog sees it. The leaders always walk first unless they say otherwise. And most of the times they say it with energy. So you can say it with energy. You can say it with your actions or you can say it with your words like a command. So once you're going out on the walk and you're getting ready to go say to the mud room to grab the leashes, you want to make sure that your dog is nice and calm. If they start going crazy, jumping, dancing, barking, howling, when you start to pull out their collar and leash, then have them sit, have them stay. And until they are fully calm, which I will go over that in a little bit, what that actually means. But until they are fully calm, you do not want to put that collar on them or the harness or the leash. You want to make sure they're fully calm and then you're going to reward them by putting on their leash. And then go ahead, walk out the door. You can say, come on, let's go. Let's go on a walk. Don't do anything that's going to get their energy right back up there. Just simple matter of fact, let's do this. Let's have a walk. No, okay, let's do it. Oh my God, you are such a good boy. Let's do this. Let's la 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 la. I'm pretty sure my dogs just woke up. I probably shouldn't have done that. It's like 5 a.m. But if that's the case, stay calm, head out the front door. And again, when you walk out that front door, who's going first? You are. And if you have to make sure your dog sits right before the walkway and then you step out, do that. Okay. And obviously you don't want your dog to be pulling on the leash. That's a whole other episode on its own. If your dog is really reactive or pull, you can get like a gentle leader, an easy walker, a halty, or a specific harness that helps with that. But never allow your dog to walk in front of you. That's the number one thing. Don't get a retractable leash. Don't have your dog walking in front of you the entire time, just leading the way because leaders 
obviously are always in front of the pack. So gentle leaders, like I said, are great. Anything that you could do to help with pulling, obviously training is the number one thing. You don't want to put a bandaid on it, but anything that's going to help you get your dog to walk on the side of you or behind you is idea, okay? And at the end of the day, your dog is not allowed to sniff or eliminate anywhere and everywhere they want, especially for boys. If they want to mark every single tree, give them a couple in the beginning and a couple of at the end, and that's it. They can't just be walking around doing whatever the fuck they want because this is a structured, balanced walk. You are the leader. So walking, it's for training. It's not just a potty break. Walking should be used as a training activity and a pack activity. This is the best way for you to bond as a pack with your dog. So without the ability to stop at every tree, dogs are actually able to maximize their exercise. They're actually able to get out there and do a walk like it's meant for. But if they're pulling towards a tree the whole time or wanting to pee or wanting to eat everything, you're not going to be the leader of that pack because the whole time you're going to be frustrated. You're going to be annoyed. You're, you're going to be pulled the whole time. You're not going to be feeling your most confident. You're not going to be feeling strong. You're going to be feeling taken advantage of, annoyed, frustrated, stressed. So use commands. Get in the habit of having your dog sit and stay for as long as you need anytime they're going bananas. But that's the number one way to keep your dog nice and calm on a walk. And a lot of this with walking is easier said than done. And I want to acknowledge that. But you have to put in the work. And I can't get into what work you have to get into because this is all about being the pack leader for this episode. But if you guys want to know more information about what to do on walks, how to make them structured, how to have more balanced walks, I do have several lessons in my program, The Dog Parent Experience. So check that out. If you don't know all that information, you can find that information at wolfiecourt.com. So when you're walking, you're not allowing your dog to sniff and pee and poop everywhere. Give them time to do that in the beginning and at the end, but in the middle, demand them to walk right on the side of you. And I guarantee you're maximizing mental stimulation and their exercise. So it's all going to be good by the time you get home. So when you do get home, make sure you're also ending with being a leader. Make sure you're going through the house first. Make sure your dog is still sitting and calm when you're taking off the leash. You want to continue that. The walk is not over when you step on your front door. The walk is over when that leash comes off. So continue from the moment you put on the leash to the moment you take the leash off. You need to be showing up as a leader because a lot of people say, oh, I know I'm the leader of my house and then they say that their dog walks in front the whole time and pulls them and they walk in front of them when they're leaving the house. At the end of the day, that doesn't seem to us as humans like the dog is being a leader, right? Because for us, leaders don't walk first. They don't walk in front of someone in a doorway. Like these things don't apply to the human world like they do the dog world. And that's why it's so important for you guys to think about this in a dog's shoes and not in your own because these things just don't apply to us in the workspace, right? So just try Trust me on this one. <laughs> so we're 30 minutes in. We're about to be talking about the playtime pack leader checklist. So let's dive into this one. I'm not going to get a lot into this because some of these go for all playtime. So take these habits and kind of apply them to all of your playtime regimen. OK, so the number one thing that I want you guys to take away from playtime is really take a consideration of what games are a challenge of your dominance. So tug of war and chasing are definitely challenging your dominance and they're absolute rule breakers. If you want to play every now and then, if you know your dog and you know they're not a very dominant person, play, but they need to start on your terms and end on your terms. And if you see that your dog is getting a little bit too rowdy, you need to end it. But go for games that are a lot more interactive where you and your dog can both play and both be at the end of the game where one isn't a leader and one is not. You don't have to be, hey, I'm higher than you. I'm the leader. You listen to me at all times. You guys can have games like Fed or things like that where you can have fun, but initiate it and end it. It has to be initiated by you and it has to be ended by you because if your dog gets in the habit of coming up to you and barking at you or throwing a toy on you and you're like, cool, let's play fetch. They're going to demand that when you don't have the time for it or when you're on the phone or you're prepping dinner or you're with the kids. You cannot let your dog get in the habit of demanding playtime because they will take advantage of that, okay? So don't do games that are a challenge of your dominance and don't let your dog start initiating and demanding playtime on their terms. The number one thing I also want you guys to keep in mind is your dog should be taught some kind of release command like drop it or leave it or release out, give. I use drop, but whatever 
whatever you can use consistently just for this action, pick one and stick with it for the entire family. Because if they have something in their mouth, like a toy or a treat or something like that, that you're playing with, and they're just running around the house and they're not dropping it, this is especially common for some breeds, but mostly for puppies who are very playful. This could be really frustrating for some parents who are trying to say, leave the house and their dog thinks it's a game and they're trying to catch their dog, but their dog has something in their mouth, like a toy or a sock, and they're just running around thinking it's a game of chase. I definitely know how frustrating that can be when you have to get to work or where you have a busy day ahead of you. But the number one way to nip that in the butt is to make sure you're using these commands when your dog isn't in that excited state. So by the time that they are, they know exactly what you want and they give it to you quicker. You cannot teach a dog what you want when they're in an excited state. You have to teach a dog. It goes back to what I said before. Drain the energy, drain the mental energy as well, and then try and teach these things because they're more susceptible to learn it at that time. Okay. So for obedience, since we kind of went our way into obedience, on its own, let's go into some tips for obedience. So this is something that I see all the time and on its opposite end, I see this as well. So I really want to acknowledge this before I get into a lot of the obedience tips. But guys, just because your dog is sitting down doesn't mean they're calm, okay? You need to wait for their tail to be still. You need to wait for them and all together for them to be completely calm before you encourage anything. So before you give a treat, before you give positive reinforcement, anything like that, I want you guys to make sure your dog is actually calm. Because in the beginning of dog parenting, I have a dog who is bananas. He's just naturally neurotic. He moves constantly. His name is Knuckles. He definitely grew into his name. He's a knucklehead. And when I have him sit for a treat the whole time, he's tap dancing his feet. He's wagging his butt. His tail doesn't wag. His butt wags. He's moving around. He's still sitting, but somehow his whole body is vibrating of excitement every single time. And it takes him about a minute or two to calm down. Even till this day, he's eight years old. He is going to be a puppy until he dies. This dog is the number one dog who has taught me that sitting does not mean calm. So I want you guys to really be cautious. What is your dog's calm? What does calm mean for your dog? It means something different for every dog. We can't just say, hey, make sure your dog is calm and submissive and then expect you guys to know what that means. It's different for every single dog. So whatever that means for your dog, if that means they're sitting, their tail is still, their butt is still, they're not, you know, tap dancing their feet around, they're just calm. So just be able to recognize what is calm and what isn't necessarily calm enough and then move from there and only give a treat or positive encouragement when you're in the clear 100% for that behavior so that your dog also knows what you consider calm and what you consider still excited. So I just talked about puppies or dogs who demand playtime or something like that, but I also want to acknowledge that Puppies and a lot of small dogs are gonna be demanding to be held a lot. They want you to hold them. They want you to pick them up, walk around with them. They want you to pick them up and sit down with them and let them be on your lap. And the number one thing that I want you guys to consider with that is you need to make sure that they're calm first. They can't be crawling up your leg and then you pick them up. You have to make sure that they're calm submissive, just like I said before, whatever that means for that dog, before you pick them up and sit with them so that they're not able to demand the attention from you because if they demand attention in any way, crying, barking, crawling up your leg, being really cute, rolling over at your feet so you can pick them up, anything like that, all you're doing is encouraging them to be a brat later on because every time that you give in to something that they're demanding, it's going to make it very easy for them to continue demanding it over and over and over again. And I know a lot of this sounds like I'm the biggest bitch in the world, but at the end of the day, you guys, all of these things are going to make it so that your dog is just so confident in their own skin that they don't need to be crawling over to you every second because they see you as a leader and leaders just don't deal with that right leaders don't deal with enabling behaviors they don't deal with puppies that are just constantly annoying constantly wanting to play they give one correction and that puppy knows damn well that it's not playtime right now and I'm not saying that you're going to have that same type of energy but all I'm saying is you need to be able to show your dog that you're a leader in all of these habits and not just say hey listen to me didn't we say what did I talk about didn't we talk about this last night? Why are you doing this right now? You're embarrassing me on the walk. We can't have those conversations like we can with our human kids, right? But what we can do is we can converse with them with all of these habits on a daily basis to show them how we expect them to show up for us. So this is one of the ways. I know it's hard. I know it's not that loving, oh, I'm your mom. I'm going to pick you up when you're cute. I'm going to pick you up when you're crying. Or, oh, you want to play right now? Let's play. Grab your toy. I know how much you want to do that because trust me, on a daily basis, I still fight myself for wanting that as well. But there comes a time where you have to say, all right, 
right, am I doing this just because I'm giving in or am I doing this because I need to do it? Am I doing this because the me from tomorrow is gonna be happy that I did this? The me from my dinner party next month is gonna be so thankful that I stuck to this because my dog is gonna be so calm, so much manners at the house when I have all my guests over and I'm gonna really feel like I'm in control of not only my pack, but of the things that are happening in my house, on my walks, during playtime, during feeding. And if you want that, if you want that kind of control, then I definitely want you guys to keep listening. All right, so never respond to your dog's whining, never respond to their barking, because all you're doing is encouraging this bad behavior, especially when it comes to crate training, especially when it comes to sleeping through the night. Instead, I want you guys to wait for them, have them sit down with their tail still, and give them some kind of positive encouragement or some kind of treat once they are actually calm and they've given you an acceptable quiet behavior and then let them out of their crate or give them attention or whatever. Just remember, it's your terms. If your dog is crying in the crate because you guys are training the puppy and they're having a hard time sleeping through the night and they're crying and you're not able to sleep, wait for that one, two or three second moment where they're not crying and open the door. That's it. Just wait for that one moment where they're not crying and then reward that quiet behavior. Because if you do that continuously, they're going to catch up on what you're trying to say. And what you're trying to say is when you give me calm, quiet behavior, I give you what you want. And they want it. They want the attention. They want to get out of the crate. They want to be pet. They want to play. So they're going to give you what you want if you give them what they want, which is easy to see boundaries. They want to know exactly what you want from them. And dogs really want this leadership. Trust me, they are going to be so relieved when you start showing up as the pack leader because they're going to be like, oh, fuck, finally, my job is done. I want to relax. Because being the pack leader, as you can see, it's not easy. It takes a lot of thought. It takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of mental energy. And all of that is being used up by your dog on a daily basis if they feel like they have to fill that role in the house. They want you to be the leader. They want to just be a pupper or this happy-go-lucky dog where they don't have to worry about anything. I'm telling you guys, if you have a dog who's barking out of the house constantly or who is extremely reactive, one, they have pent up energy, but two, they feel like they have to. They don't feel like you're doing the job. They don't feel like you are telling them, hey, you don't need to bark right now. And not in a way where you're physically saying, hey, you don't need to bark right now, shut up. But in a way of your actions and your energy and your habits that are saying, hey, I got this under control. You don't need to bark. You don't need to be anxious. You don't need to be crazy because I'm the leader. I'm going to handle it. No matter what comes our way, I got you. And as long as your dog understands that you got them, they're going to be a lot more confident. They're going to be a lot more happy. They're going to be so just the dog that you want. Because if you have a job and you constantly feel like you're working, you're not going to be the best you, right? And that's what your dog is doing because you're not being the pack leader just because you don't know how to, right? It's not because you don't want to. You're listening to this episode because you want to learn. All right, so that's my little rant. I'll step off my soapbox and I'll continue on going. (laughs) Sometimes on these longer episodes, I just want to give you guys a little bit more encouragement because a lot of people are struggling with anxious dogs, separation anxiety. The anxiety in dogs, I was talking about this with Leanne on the podcast that I was just on, Why? of the party last week. That one's going to be airing probably in January. I'll let you guys know. But I was talking to her on her podcast about how the amount of anxiety and separation anxiety and things that dogs are going through. When I first started over 10 years ago, it was not that common to see a dog with anxiety or a dog with all of these problems. Can't be left alone. Can't hold its own ground. They don't know how to be themselves, but it's because we as a whole are more anxious. We have way more things on our plates, a lot more anxiety and stress and mental illness and stuff like that is coming about in the human world. But what happens is our dogs are a direct reflection of us. So if we're not feeling confident to show up as a leader, our dogs are feeling anxious because I can guarantee you, if you don't feel like you know what you're doing, what does that mean? You feel uncertain. And what does uncertainty usually mean? It means, oh, what am I doing? There's a lot of this weird, ucky energy. And what is dog's language? Energy. So if you feel weird about something, if you're not feeling confident, if you're feeling unsure, or if you're straight out stressed about something, if your dog is also, it's always a maniac on walks, so you're really dreading a walk every time you get that leash on, your dog is going to feel that and they're going to show up for the party because they don't know why you're feeling that feel. They just know 
know, oh, mom's feeling this, dad's feeling this. I better show up ready to fuck shit up because they're anxious and I need to protect them. Instead, you need to be doing that for them. You need to say, "Uh uh-oh, this person, this dog's feeling anxious. What do I need to show up to show them that I am gonna fuck shit up for them, right? Pardon my language, so sorry for the kids if they're in the car. But this is how dogs think. If you show them that you're the leader, they're not gonna be looking for trouble on walks. If you show them that you are only gonna introduce them to dogs that are a good fit for them, they're not gonna try and nip at dogs at the park. They're not gonna try and do things if you introduce a dog on the streets. If you feel weird, they're gonna lunge at that dog or nip at that dog because they're gonna feel like they need to protect you. But if you feel confident and you know exactly what you're doing and you know you've been a leader since the moment you open your eyes this morning, then that dog is gonna pick up on this and they're gonna be like, oh, mom or dad got it going. They feel confident right now. I don't have any reasons to feel weird about this dog. I'm just gonna sniff some butt. It's a completely different approach when you feel confident. So I just want you guys to remember all of these tips, they may not be something that you're like all on board to start, but I'm telling you, I have been doing this a very long time. Every single time I stop using these habits in a season in life when I'm too busy or when I just don't want to freaking do it, my dogs immediately revert back to the dogs that I do not want them to be because this is a night and day difference. The second I start doing these habits again, oh, she's for real now. Let's get back on board. Mom's showing up. Let's do this. And they're calm again. They're normal again. But if you stop right back up there. So I guarantee you, I know this works. I know it's worth it. And I really am curious to know what things that you guys see in your dog that is their challenge of dominance because your dog is challenging you on a daily basis. You just don't see it. And if you show them that you can challenge them back and you show them that you are the leader and that you have boundaries and that you have rules, they're gonna take you seriously, okay? So back to giving your dog attention on your terms, there should always be absolutely like no petting, no nudges, no jumping, no pawing, any of that unless you invite it. Demand your space and at the end of the day, it's going to be so nice for you to to demand your space, especially when you're in a season where you have a lot of things going on. If you have a new baby, if you have a lot of things going on at work, like you have a big project coming up, or if you just need some me time to stretch, to work out, if you want to lay down on the floor without your dogs running all over you, you need to be able to demand your space. And we're going to be going over to boundaries in the next one, but you absolutely need to set boundaries from day one one because if you don't your dog is going to see you as someone with no boundaries and they're going to walk all over you all the time and you're going to be exhausted every day especially if you have a whole pack I have a whole pack I have five dogs I should have mentioned that in the beginning if you don't already know me I have five dogs plus we usually have another dog that's a foster dog who lives with us full time we do not have a foster dog right now but every week we have at least three or four other dogs that come to our house whether they're our clients dogs whether they're our friends dogs whatever the case is we used to have a lot more but now that we have chickens and bunnies and all of that as well. We stopped bringing in a lot more animals. But if you have more than one dog, this episode is even more important for you to start implementing these habits right away because you have a legit pack. Even if you just have one dog, your pack is you, your husband, your roommate, your sister, your brother, your wife, whoever it is that lives in your house, it's you two, you three, and the dog. That's your pack. If it's just you and the dog, that's your pack. Pack is just your dog and whoever else is around it. But if you have more than one dog like me, you absolutely need to do this. You have to do this work, okay guys? All right, and the last little thing that I wanna go over about obedience is obedience commands are not requests. They're not. Leaders have to follow through when their dog is given a command because if you don't follow through every single time, your dog, they're not gonna listen. They're gonna think that one time that you let them get away with it is that time every time. So they're gonna push it to see, is it that one time? Is it that one time? So as long as you follow through every single time, your dog is gonna listen to you because they're gonna know that you're for real. But if you aren't consistent and you just follow through when you have the time or when it's convenient for you, your dog isn't gonna listen to you as quick. And the last thing, on this, if you're struggling with biting or mouthing or anything like that, as so many people are, episode number 12, the last one that I just released is one that I was talking to some lady that I met on Instagram. She just got a dog and she was struggling with some mouthing and biting. I sent her a quick audio on my phone of what to do. And a lot of it was talking about pack leadership as well. So if you do want to go ahead and listen to that one, that is the last episode, go ahead and do that one afterwards. But all of these things, you need to be consistent. Even if it takes you 35 minutes to get your dog to sit and stay and be calm, 
you need to follow through and just be patient and stick with it, okay? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, I'm so happy that I remember this one. This is a good one. So I already told you guys with obedience, I have more, gosh, I, I know, I'm sorry, guys. I already told you guys with obedience that for a command, I want you guys to use one command for one action. So don't use the command, leave it for five or six different actions. I want you guys to only use one command for one thing. So if your dog is jumping on you, you could say down. And if your dog is on the couch and you want them off, you could say off, but don't say down or off for both of them. They need to be separate. So your dog knows exactly what you want in that moment. You don't want your dog to sit there and think, oh, what does she mean right now? Which one do I do? Give it to them exactly how you want it make it as easy as possible. And the last tip that I want to give you guys with obedience is a simple command, whatever that command, that one command that you choose for each action, it should be obeyed before any pleasurable interaction. So that means eating, petting, playing, having an exciting voice, giving a new toy, whatever it is, going to the backyard that they really love doing. In the beginning, it should be started with a command, a sit, a calm, a give me a paw, something like that. Because what's going to happen is, is your dog is going to see you as the leader. They're going to see that you are the reason why they are getting that pleasurable interaction in the first place. You're the reason why they're eating. You're the reason why they're getting pet. You're the reason why they're playing. And I know this sounds crazy, but you really want your dog to see all of the work that you do. (laughs) It's not like a kid who you're like, hey, I just spent a thousand dollars on camp. I want you to be grateful. Can you say thank you to your mom and dad? You can't say that. But for dogs, what you can say is, hey, every time you do something fun, I'd like for you to get a little command and I want you to sit down first, right? Or I want you to do whatever that command is first. That way you're starting all of those pleasurable activities with calm energy, one, and two, with acknowledgement that you are also the leader. All righty. So this one. We're almost there. We're going to be talking about house and boundaries next. And I'm sure you guys are wondering how the hell am I going to pull off free training in January for this? And trust me, I have so many more things to talk about (laughs) when it comes to pack leaders, but we are almost at the end of this episode. So I do want to go into how to be the pack leader of your house and then also some last minute boundaries that you guys can give. So in the house, if you do choose to allow your dog on the furniture, which I do, I want you guys to to start practice inviting and uninviting them on your furniture. So use a command like off or down, just like we talked about, and use it frequently when you don't need your dog to be off. That way, when you do have guests over or when you do have something on the couch where you don't want your dog to be jumping on it, like say you're folding all your laundry and you don't want your big ass dog jumping on and knocking it all over, you need to practice to get your dog off of the couch all throughout your life and not just demanding it when you absolutely need it. I say this all the time. If your kid is going crazy in a restaurant and you're asking them to calm down, they're definitely not going to calm down if they don't know how to. But if you are demanding manners and you're asking for them to be calm all throughout the day, even when they don't need to, they're not going to be as reluctant to calm down if they know exactly when, how, and why. So teach them. So randomly, if y'all are cuddling on the couch, just stay down. Have them go lay on their bed for no reason at all. In the wild, leaders all have the best resting spots. They all have the best sleeping spot. So don't feel guilty. So many people like myself, we don't kick our dogs off of the bed because we want them to sleep. Y'all, our dogs are sleeping all damn day. They don't have work. They don't have a job. They don't have anything to do. We really need to rest ourselves. If we're doing all this work during the day, we definitely need the work. Being a pack leader is exhausting, but doing everything else life needs us to do is also exhausting. So we really need to be the ones that are getting a really great sleep. So demand your space. Really don't feel guilty. It's natural for them, for leaders to get the best resting spot. So demand your space on the couch, on your favorite chair, on your bed. And this is one of the ones that I don't necessarily like, but I I have to add it because it is part of being a pack leader. But a lot of people do believe that there shouldn't be dogs in the bed, that that's not necessarily a pack leader habit. And this is one of the hardest things for many people because who doesn't love cuddling? But at the end of the day, pack leaders don't. (laughs) Pack leaders have their own space. They need to get their princess sleep. They have to have the best spot in the house, the best spot in the woods, whatever it is. You know, I don't think that your dog should be sleeping in another room. It's very important that you guys all sleep together as a pack. And this one, I'm going to be flexible with it because I don't want to say no one should have their dog sleeping in bed with them because I just had five dogs sleeping in my bed overnight and my back is killing me. So I don't want to be a hypocrite, but this is something that I've said in the beginning of this. I did five unexpected lessons dog parents face. I came clean of how I'm having a really hard 
hard time demanding my furniture and my couches and my bed and how we do want to make that transition of saying this is our boundary now. We know for the past 10 plus years, you guys have slept on the bed with us, but we might want to make that a change. So this is one that I really want to hear from you guys. What do you think? But at the end of the day, it is one of the rules. Pack leaders should be the ones sleeping on their bed. There shouldn't be dogs sleeping with them. They should be in the room as a pack sleeping together, like on the ottoman at the end of the bed or the dog bed on the side of your bed. So you guys are close, but this is one of the rules. I got to leave it out there. Just put it there. All right. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't like that one very much either, but it is what it is. All right. So the last thing that we're going to be getting into are boundaries. So these are the habits that I think every pack leader needs to set for their boundaries. So like I said already, I just want to remind you guys, demanding your space at random times throughout the day is very important. It encourages your dog to be independent so they could have their own space. And also it really helps them not have anxiety when you're gone. So if your dog is used to being in the room or outside or something like that, when you're cooking or when you're in the office, that is going to be really great for them when you're leaving. Because what happens is we have our dogs right next to us working at the office. We pull up a dog bed right underneath us, or I'm not going to lie. I've even pulled up a chair right next to me and put the bed on the chair and let my dogs sit on a chair right next to me while I'm working. Or I have two dogs sitting right behind me on the couch as I'm recording this. But if you do demand your space at random times throughout the day, it's really going to be coming in handy when you're using the restroom, when you're folding laundry, when you're stretching, when you have guests over, all of the simple things that are really going to be a lot easier. And at the end of the day, if you do have a pack like me, guys, it's exhausting every time you get up if all of your dogs follow you. If you just want to grab some water and all of your dogs are sleeping and super cute because you're watching a movie and it's 9 p.m. and you're like, oh, I'm really thirsty, you're less likely to get up because you know you're going to wake the whole household up. And that's how it was in my house for a really long time because I was not demanding my space. My dogs followed me absolutely everywhere. If they couldn't see me, all of them followed. And that could be pretty exhausting. Sometimes you just need your space. And I know that probably sounds like a monster, but I want to remind you guys that I take care of over 70 animals every single day with absolutely no days off when it comes to that. So at the end of the day, I do want my space. I do want, just like for you guys, if you guys have kids, you have to have a moment in your day where you take a break. You have some me time. You have some peace and quiet where all you have to think about is yourself. And that's the best way to do it. Demand your space. Again, I want you guys to be very aware going into this, how you guys punish dogs. Do you guys use positive encouragement? Just how you guys are going to get what you want. You guys need to think that through in the beginning. But the one thing I am going to tell you to do is never reprimand your dog out of anger or frustration. Having your energy in check is one of your biggest priorities as a pack leader because that's how they're going to trust you. If you don't have your energy in check and you're reacting to your dog out of anger, stress, frustration, annoyance, anything like that, your dog isn't going to see you the way that you see you. You need to show up in the best way that you can for your dog because you are their one person. You're everything to them. You're the person who feeds them. You're the person that literally everything in their life, you are their hub. So I really want you guys to make sure that you are cautious of your energy. You keep your energy in check. I have tons of tips on that, but the best way to do it is if you're stressed because of traffic, if you're stressed because of work, if you're stressed because of anything, sit in the car five minutes before you walk into your house or whatever you have to do. Take a few minutes to take some breaths and change your energy. Do not bring the energy of the work day or of something that's happening that's stressful or anxious for you. Do not bring that home with your dog or your kids. Same shit, right? But don't bring it home with your dog because your dogs are very sensitive to energy and they're going to pick up on that. And if you're trying to do these pack leader habits and you're giving commands and your energy is not aligned with your actions, you're not going to get what you want because your actions and your energy and your words all have to be in alignment for your dog to know what they want. Because if you're saying one thing, giving a command and you're trying to act calm and assertive like a normal pack leader would, but inside you're chaotic and you're stressed and you're anxious, your dog does not see calm, assertive pack leader. They see anxious. (laughs) They see all of the things that you don't want them to see. They're seeing that. Okay, so stay in check with your energy. And again, don't leave your dog unsupervised with people who cannot stay in check with their energy. If anyone is not capable of maintaining leadership, like kids or people that you don't trust, a roommate that literally never listens, your mom who doesn't follow any of your rules and always gives your dog who has food allergies, tons of table food, whatever the situation is, do not leave your dog with people who cannot maintain this leadership. It's as simple as that. I have been a Nazi about this since day one. Literally not one person, even 
when I first met Tony, I think for like the first nine plus months, I wouldn't let him walk certain dogs in our pack because I didn't see him as a leader yet. So I wasn't gonna put him in a situation where I was setting him up for failure, right? Same thing for my, I don't leave town a lot because I know my pack is very high maintenance. I know it is a lot of work. I have over 20 animals. I'm not gonna leave my pack of dogs, chickens, bunnies, guinea pigs in the hands of anyone who can't maintain that leadership. Because what might happen? My pack might start fighting. Something might be left out that's not supposed to, which means my dogs have to go to the hospital now. So many things can happen when you're not maintaining leadership, especially if you have more than one dog in your pack, okay? Alrighty. So the last things that I want you guys to remember to keep in mind is everything belongs to you. The toys, the treats, the bowls, the bed, the food, the house, everything. So you should be able to clean it, to move it, to handle it, to remove it. Anything that you want to do to your stuff in your house, even if it's the dog stuff, you should be able to do that without the hassle from your dog. So if your dog is eating, you should be able to move their dog food bowl without them trying to kill you. Everything belongs to you and your dog should know it. And not even, don't do that in a way where it's like, everything's mine, I'm the queen. You're, keep saying this. This is not a king, queen, slash peasant rule of the house. This is not, I know how a lot of this can come off because when I first learned all of this 10 plus years ago, I was like, holy shit, that doesn't sound very fun for the dog. But I'm telling you the relief that you see from your dogs when you actually start implementing this is crazy. They are craving this guys. They are craving it. So on that note, everything belongs to you. The number one thing that belongs to you guys is your house, your hub, your den. And a lot of people don't consider this. And this is one of the things I got a reminder this year. And it was one of those reminders where I was like, oh damn, this is one thing that I forgot. This is one thing that I haven't been implementing and it showed. And I wanna give this little gift to you guys, okay? The number one way that you can be the pack leader of your house is not only with your bed, but it's with that front door. Because I always say this, the crate is your dog's den, right? But what's even more their den? Your guys' den, the whole pack's den, the house, the apartment, the condo, whatever it is, guest house, whatever you guys are living in, even if it's a mobile home, even if you guys are traveling and you guys live in a van, that is your den. And it is your den as the pack leader. So anytime someone knocks on that door, Anytime anything happens at the front door, your dog should not be allowed to go in front of that front door. Not only should they not be allowed to walk in front of you on a walk, going through a walkway, they also should not be able to be near that front door. So whether you have to draw an invisible line where they cannot cross that, I do this in the kitchen, I used to at least. Now my exit to the backyard is through the kitchen, so this kind of sucks for me now, but I never used to allow my dogs in the kitchen. There's no reason for it. I teach this for a lot of people. Dogs don't need to be in the kitchen. If you drop food that they shouldn't eat, they shouldn't be anywhere close by. If you have a pot of boiling water and they're underneath you and you trip, that's obviously not a pretty picture and it's extremely painful. So there's no reason your dog should be in the kitchen. But the reason why I say there's no reason that the dog should be by the front door is because if they are controlling the front door, if they are the first one to be there when someone makes a delivery, when someone knocks on the door, when there is a noise at the front door, if they are the first one there, they are the leader of the house. If they are the first one to bark at that door and run to the door when someone's here, they are your leader. If you allow them them to walk out that front door, to come in that front door, to hang out at that front door while you're talking to someone, they are the leader. The number one way that you become the pack leader of your house is by owning that front door. Let me say that for the people in the back. The number one way to claim control of your house and to be the pack leader of your house is to claim the entrance of your house because that is your guys' pack's den. So if you control the den, you control the pack. All right, guys, remember, leaders are not mean. They are not angry. They are assertive. They are fair and they're fun. We don't hold grudges and we are always appreciative and loving and we show up the best way we can. We don't show up anxious. We don't show up throwing our energy all over the place saying, I'm having a bad day, so you are too. You're coming on this roller coaster with me. We are extremely intentional with how we're showing up. We are extremely intentional about the things that we're doing and we always, always, always stay consistent. If there's any word, if there's anything that you take, if you just, this whole last hour, if you didn't take anything, if not one thing, take this, consistency. Whatever you do, 
be consistent with it. I don't care if it takes 35 minutes, an hour for your dog to submit, you are gonna be consistent because that's what pack leaders do. All right, so if you guys are having trouble understanding any of this, or if your dog shows any aggression towards you or anything like that, I want you guys to reach out. If your dog shows aggression to you because you're trying to be the pack leader, you definitely need to reach out to a local trainer. If you're in Los Angeles, go to dogsquadla.com and I'll definitely help you out. Or you can take advantage of one of our virtual online phone calls. That could be video or just talking, whatever you want. But I want you guys to realize that all of this hard work will pay off. You're not gonna do all of these habits in one day and wake up tomorrow and have your dream dog. You need to have structure and leadership on a daily basis, even when you don't want to. If you wake up and you're having an off day, if you wake up and you're tired, if you wake up and you're on vacation, if it's Christmas, if it's New Year's and you're hungover, That doesn't matter. Pack leaders don't take days off. Just like a mom can't take a day off or a dad can't take a day off if they're sick. You still gotta feed your kid. You still gotta do all the things, right? It is the same thing. Pack leaders do not take days off. A pack wolf or a dog in the wild doesn't say, oh, I'm gonna let this dog take over for the day. Because what happens? The leader is gonna get killed. (laughs) Straight up. They get overthrown in the wild. And you don't wanna get overthrown. Your dog isn't gonna kill you, at least most of the cases, right? Your dog isn't going to kill you, but your dog is going to take control of your house and drive you fucking bananas for the entire time you have that dog. So take control. And if this list of things to implement on a daily basis to be a pack leader rubbed you the wrong way, or if it makes you question whether these things are even necessary to having a balanced pack, try to remember that dogs are living in a human's world, but they are not human. So I just really encourage you guys to take a look at how wolves interact in the wild and recognize that giving your dog a life as close as possible as to the one that they're built for will make them feel so balanced, so aligned, and it will correct so many bad habits that are truly a challenge of dominance. All of the bad habits that I see are pent up energy or a challenge of dominance. Literally, most, I would say at least 99% of the ones that I see on a daily basis for the people that are reaching out to me are those two, pent up energy and a challenge of dominance. So if you follow all of the things that we talked about in this hour plus of pack leader checklist information, y'all, you are gonna have an amazing pack. Just keep calm and practice on and I guarantee you guys are definitely gonna be so happy you tuned in. If you guys have any questions, I please, 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 I encourage you guys to reach out. And the reason why I want you guys to do that is because I'm having my workshop and what's happening is this workshop is going to be new. It's going to be the first workshop of the year. It's going to be right at the beginning of the year to make sure everyone is starting with a great foundation for the new year of being the pack leader of their house and on walks and all the things that we talked about. But what I encourage you guys to do is anything that you're having trouble with in the meantime, over this next couple of weeks that you guys are practicing this, I want you guys to reach out. And even if you guys can send me audios, that would be even more amazing because I could put those in the workshop workshop, but I want you guys to give me feedback so I know exactly what else to add. I gave you guys all of my foundational tools here today so that you guys could get started, but what I want to do is I want to further support you guys in my workshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the workshop. The first half of it is going to be further training, and then the last half is going to be all Q&A. So that is going to be your shot to get coaching from me and also to hear a bunch of information from other people that are struggling with some things as well. Maybe they're a few weeks ahead of you and they're struggling with something that you could actually benefit from and nip it in the butt before it even arises in your household. The power of community and the power of learning from other people is really incredible. And if you guys are able to, I definitely recommend you guys checking it out. My workshops do have a wait list right now. So if you are interested in the workshops, just go to www.wolfiecourt.com forward slash workshops. So again, www.wolfiecourt.com slash workshops. And those are gonna give you all of the information information. You can put your name down and I'll send you information right when registration is open. That way you guys can start the year off with a bang. If you guys found this episode useful, I definitely encourage you guys to take a screenshot. Actually, there's three ways that you could help me because I put so much love, energy, and time into these episodes for you guys and I don't get paid at all for it. It's absolutely free. I give up my time so that I can teach you guys because it's just everything in my heart just dances when I can help people, especially if this is something that you weren't aware of and now it's life-changing for you. That literally lights my heart on fire. If you guys really want to support the Thank Dog It's Friday podcast, there's three ways that you can do that. The first way is take a screenshot, send it to one of your dog friends that you know and say, hey, this episode was really helpful. You should listen in because they probably need some pack mentality as well. The second way to help is to take that screenshot and put it on your social media. And I 
I would love for you guys to also put your biggest takeaway of the episode. It's always so amazing to know, you know, I'm just here talking for an hour plus pretty much to myself is what it feels like. So when you guys reach out and you guys let me know along with other people what your biggest takeaways were for the episode, it really makes me feel like I'm not talking to just myself. So I really do appreciate those. And I just gave you guys so, I didn't put any fluff in this episode. It's all back to back tips, tactical things for you guys to start right away. So if there's one thing that you guys learned that really resonated with you, please let me know along with your social media. And the last way to help me out, which is the biggest way is to leave a review on the podcast. So if you're listening right now, you're likely on a podcast platform. If you're on iTunes, I would really appreciate you guys going and leaving a review. The more people that leave reviews means the more people get to see this episode and actually find the Thank Dog It's Friday podcast, which means that we get to help more dog parents, which like I said, lights my heart on fire. So those are the three ways that you guys can help me. If you guys found this useful, I would really appreciate you doing that. If not, I just appreciate you guys being here and listening this whole way, taking an hour out of your day. If it's a Friday, I hope you're having an absolutely beautiful day. We have the holidays next week, so I just want you guys to have fun be present, stay safe, and really enjoy yourselves. Next Friday, we're going to have another incredible episode coming to you, so stay tuned. And if you guys already aren't subscribed, do that because anytime that I have bonus episodes out, you guys won't know unless you subscribe and you'll get a notification. And spoiler alert, there definitely will be bonus episodes. Like always, I love you guys. Take care. Have a beautiful weekend and have a great holiday. 